We serve the King of Glory. Family, welcome to worship. To our EGF family who's watching online, welcome to the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout in this room. Come on, put your hands together.
are great, that you are greatly to be praised. We shout the name Jehovah in this room. Come on, put those hands together.
the song says we won't stop blazing that means in every season he deserves glory that means in every season he deserves praise though you slay me yet will i trust you though you slay me yet will i praise you though you slay me my soul will still cry hallelujah though you slay me i will still bless the lord you give and you take away but blessed be the day 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 though you slay me in this world you will have trouble in this world you will have anguish in this world you will have moments that you don't understand but take heart Jesus has overcome overcome the world we serve a God who is the overcomer and what is our response to the fact that he overcame for us is that we give him our gratitude come on lift those hands as high as they can go father we're grateful for your love we're grateful for you our response is song and worship to you. Now all my words fall short. I got nothing new. How could I explain all my gratitude? I hear church, come on, lift it up. I could sing these songs as I ought. Every song Come on, let's sing it out. So I know about you. Praise you again and again. So all that I have is a Yes, so we give it to you. And I know it's not. Oh 
once again sing. So come on, mash. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lot in it. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, this you church. Lift it up. Say, come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Lift up your soul. you got it out in it. You say, oh.
and you free me so I will bless your name I will bless your name just a song for me. But this week, I got some really bad news. So this is not just a song for me. But this is my heart's cry. And some of you may be in a season where it's tough and you can't see through to the end. But in this moment, I speak over this atmosphere. I command our souls. I command my soul to bless the name of Jesus. Not just when it's good, not just when it's comfortable, not just when it's pleasing, but when it's hard, when it's hard, I will still bless you. I will still bless you. Your praise will ever be on my lips. tears I know he has done great things he has done great things bless his holy name and I name bless his keeping name bless the faithful name of Jesus he's faithful and he's true we bless your name Jesus we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name
Don't let your sound die down, die down on this room. Come on, lift your voice to the King. Lift your voice to the Lamb. We declare that you are worthy. We declare that you are mighty. We declare that you are awesome. We declare that you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve it all. Jesus. Let's sing it together. Sing.
Why don't we give him the worship that we're singing about? Would you just give it to him now? Whether you're in this room or you're watching online around the world, would you give him worship now? Would you give him worship now? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to speak to a group of people in this room. I don't know who you are, but I don't want you to miss the moment. Now, I know that all of us are engaged, and so because of that, I don't feel like we're missing a moment, but I wanna make sure that we don't miss a moment. For the last few moments, from the last song into this one, whether you recognize it or not, was a divine invitation by God. It was an invitation by God specifically for everyone to worship, but I wanna make sure I talk to this specific group as Jose began to sing, and then Chris began to sing, and then the, the overall swell of what was happening. I want to make sure that we don't miss an opportunity. And that is this, that no matter where you find yourself in life, that you are making sure that you bless the Lord. Whether you find yourself in a good season or in a good time or a mountaintop or whether you find yourself in a desert or a valley or you receive bad news or whatever it may be, I want to make sure that you don't miss this opportunity to bless the Lord. For we are a people who refuse to hold our praise hostage based on our circumstance. But because he is God and he is unchanging, because he is always good, because he is always faithful and no circumstance changes it. I want to make sure that no matter how you walk in here today, you will leave differently because you chose to say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so no matter where you find yourself in this moment, I just want you to lift up your voice. Whether it's a good time, a bad time, a fruitful time, a wilderness time, wherever you are, would you lift up your voice and give him glory in this room? We give it to you, we give it to you, we give it to you, it belongs to you, it belongs to you. 
take this time to pray for one another but I just want you to do this if you have not already done so just lift your hands to the Lord in this room and without asking him for anything would you just worship him without asking him for anything would you just worship him he deserves it all he deserves it all this is not the moment that we ask him for anything we just worship him yes Lord Receive it all, Lord. Receive it all. Receive it all. Receive it all. We give it all to you. We worship you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. We honor you and we bless your name. We honor you and we bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. do realize he can never be praised enough we just stop but not because it's over we stop because he could never be praised enough if we had 10,000 tongues in 10,000 years we'd never be able to give him enough we we'd never be able to give him enough that's why he was just singing receive it all receive it all receive it all all the glory all the honor all the praise all the worship receive it all yes lord would you now lift up your voice in one thunderous roar of praise and give it all to him now would you give it all to him now He deserves even more than that. He deserves even more than that. I just happen to believe you have even more in you than that.
just crazy enough to believe you have even more in you than that. happen to believe you might be able to make your neighbor just a little bit more uncomfortable with the kind of praise that you are about to give him in this next moment? Some of you say if you had been through what I've been through, you would be praising him too. Oh, you haven't heard anything yet. There is still another level of a sound to be released in this room. I dare you to do it now. There is a sound that a band can't play. There is a sound that an angel can't make. There is a sound that creation can't. It's the sound of the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're not in a rush because more than us being here, he's here. More importantly than us being here, he is here. And we acknowledge his presence. Every hand lifted all over the room and online. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. I know there's more left in the room, more praise, more adoration to give. 
the way that I'm going to ask you to empty yourself is right now where you are. Keep those hands lifted. And just with a glorious whisper all over this room, just begin to tell him how much you love him. Have an intimate conversation with your daddy right now and express your love to him. Visualize him being right there face to face. The Bible says that Moses would literally have a conversation with God as a man would have a conversation face to face. I want you to just understand that by proximity and by the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Father is here, your Abba is here. And so just begin to love on him with your words. You don't have to be loud. You just have to mean it. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. If you're watching online, do the same. Just begin to, in a whisper, begin to tell him, Daddy, I love you. Papa, I love you. You're so good to me. You're the only thing I desire. Tell him you're what I treasure. Tell him you are my delight. Tell him there's none more beautiful than you. There's none more holy than you. There's none more glorious than you. There's none more holy than you. Tell him he's all, he's altogether lovely, altogether beautiful. Tell him how much he is the object of your affection. Sometimes we can claim it with a loud voice, but some, there's something that's pregnant in a whisper because you know that he has to be close to hear you. And I'm telling you by the presence of the Spirit, he is close right now. So just begin to whisper. Tell him I can't live without you. Tell him I want no one but you. Tell him you can take everything. And as long as I have you, I have everything. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. I love you, Daddy. And for some of you, he's whispering back to you right now. He's whispering back to you how much he loves you, how much you're affirmed by him, how much he approves of you, how you don't have to work for his approval. You can receive it in this moment, the affirmation of your father. His presence is his affirmation of us, that we are his and he is ours. That's why he's here. He simply come home because his kids are here. We welcome you, daddy. We welcome you, Abba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Can everybody all the all the building just begin to say hallelujah? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you give God a hand clap of praise all over the room? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Will you may be seated in the presence of our God? 
We never want to take his presence for granted, do we? We love the presence of God who makes himself known to us by the spirit of God. And we are a grateful people. It's one thing for us to gather. It's another thing for him to be in the midst of our gathering. You have many gatherings, but the difference is when he's in the midst. And he's in the midst this morning. If you're grateful, just let him know. If you're grateful, just let him know. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We welcome you to all our first time visitors. We welcome you to Deeper Fellowship Church where one thing we are about is we are about the presence of God. We love God and so if you're visiting and this is your first time either online or in the room, we welcome you this morning. We know that you are here by divine design. What do I mean by that? You could have gone anywhere, but the Lord orchestrated your steps here. Maybe it's for today, maybe it's for a lifetime, but the Lord will see to it that you are directed into the pasture that you need to find yourself. But while you're here, we welcome you. So deeper, why don't you just put your hands together and welcome all of our first time visitors. If you're watching online for the first time, we say good morning to you, good afternoon to you. We love you and we are so grateful that you've joined us today. Well, it's generosity time in the house. Yeah, it's generosity time in the house. Um, all of the giving prompts are there on your screen. If you're watching us uh, there online, um, you can give on our app, you can give on our website, uh, you can text any amount to 84321. All of the various ways are there. And so go ahead and do that now. If you need an envelope in the room and you want to give by check or cash, go ahead and raise your hands and our ushers will serve you now. And we will collect those envelopes at the end uh, of the service. And so if you need an envelope, just put your hand up. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. I see hands still up. Yeah. We'll serve you that way. So we're delighted that you uh, um, are giving. Um, most of us give online, but some of us still give by check and by cash. And no matter how you give, it's about the heart behind it. Amen. So, yeah, if you still need an envelope, I still see hands up. Uh, keep your hands up and the ushers will serve you. Um, I want to go to a passage of scripture that literally was ringing in my ears this morning. Um, I want you to go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. We've been in 1 John, right? Because that's where we, 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 we've been looking at the fact that John says, do not love the world or anything in the world. Pastor William has been preaching masterfully on that. And I woke up with this, you know, in my hearing, and I wanted to share it with you. And you may say, this is a little odd for generosity, right? But let's read it, and, and then we'll... Uh, make some comments and then pray. Uh, let's read it together. First John chapter five, verse 21 ESV. It says there, say, read it with me. Little children, keep yourselves from, let's read it one more time. Little children, keep yourselves from, one more time. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. The tenor of the letter of first John is basically like a a dad writing to his kids. Over and over again, John is saying this phrase, little children. And ultimately, he, he rounds out this letter with what some people would call an, an, an odd ending. It's not where you would normally find an in, ending. With Paul's letters, there's normally a, a final greeting or something like that. But John says, you know what? Hey, let me sum up the summation of everything I've said with one phrase. Keep yourselves from idols. And here's the reality. You know, when it comes to generosity times, we are making war on idolatry. What do I mean by that? In your giving, what you're basically saying to the Lord is I refuse and I push away the worship of money or mammon. In giving it to God, you're actually obeying the command to keep yourselves from idols. I was having a conversation with my son on the way in here, we saw an Audi, and he's a car lover. And I said, you see that? He said, yeah, I see that. Uh, 
he was like, man, with everything they've done to that car, that car is probably, you know, $80,000. I was like, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and so he said, I want three cars. I want uh, one to drive around in every day, probably a Tesla is what he said, because gas prices are high. He said, then I want a Suburban, you know, he didn't say to move his family around, but I parenthetically inserted in my mind, you had to move your family around because we've modeled that you need a Suburban in our household, you know. And he said, then I want a, you know, a toy car. I said, okay, that's cool. I said, oh, cool. And I said, that's wonderful. Just make sure those things don't have you even if you have those things. He was like, well, but I was just saying, you know, I just want it, you know. I just want to, uh, you know, I, I don't mean that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a big deal about it. I said, I know, young man. I know, young man. I said, just make sure that the things that you have don't have you. And I believe, yeah, I believe ultimately this is, this is kind of the heart behind this scripture. John is saying, look, in everything that you do, beloved, in everything that you do, children, keep God number one. Worship him only. See, idols are obliterated as long as God is elevated. Idols are obliterated as long as God is elevated. And in the time of generosity, it may seem like something we go through as routine, y'all. But honestly, what we're saying is we're not worshiping our resource. We're not worshiping our money. What we worship is God and God alone. And in so doing, we're keeping ourselves from what? Idols. That the thing that we have doesn't have us. The thing that we prioritize above all else it's not our resource, but the source. And who's the source? God. So make giving your priority not just to be generous, but as a weapon against idolatry. Because this world worships, the, worships money. It's everywhere. It's pervasive. We are consumed by it. But this is not so for the children of God. We love who? God and God alone. And it's him who richly provides all of, what, all of what we need. And so as you give, not just today, but as you give week after week, understand God doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our money. Last time I checked, he started creation with a word. He didn't need my dollars to fund his plan. He started with the power of his word. And if you get the Hebrews, the Bible says that he upholds the word, the world by the word of his power. <laughs> Tell me how, where money comes into play. He does not need my money to function. He does not need your money to function. But our money is and our generosity is a weapon against idolatry. Amen? So let's pray and then let's say to God through our giving, we worship you and you alone. Father, we thank you for the ability to give this morning and we thank you God that you receive it all God we sang receive our worship all of our worship and this is an act of our worship this is part of our worship and God what we're saying through our generosity what we're th saying through our giving is that we reject the spirit of the age to hoard we reject the spirit of the age to to exalt money and resource what we say is you are first and we declare our divine dependence, our glad dependence upon you. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless us, not just with resources, but bless us with more of yourself as we keep ourselves from idols through generosity. We thank you for the privilege to give in every dollar that you've given us and every talent that generates dollars and abilities. God, we thank you for all that. And we give you glory in this act of worship. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. There's such a sweet atmosphere in the room. And uh, I have a couple of announcements and I wish I had the gift of David Benyon who would sing them about now so he would keep the atmosphere the way that it is. <laughs> but that would be kind of weird if I did it. I would just leave that up to him. But I do have 
a few announcements for us, and I'm trying to, if they weren't important for us, I promise you I wouldn't say them right now because I want to keep the atmosphere the way that it is. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just help that moment just by giving him praise with our mouths one more time? Just... Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just literally waiting. I'm not trying to move too quick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm standing here, I'm pretty convinced that if I stayed here, I could stay like this the whole day. <laughs> so at some point, I have to say something. <laughs> okay. Announcements. I have, I have a couple of them that are important. If you could just, yes. All right. Um, vacation Bible School. Uh, yes, that's exciting. Um, it's coming up. July 26th through the 29th. Uh, register your kids ages 3 to 11. It is completely free. Uh, and you should be here because it's going to be uh, transformative for them. Uh, I know that um, we may use those types of terms, but to be able to be in the presence of God around other kids and learning about his word for four straight nights is a very good thing. And so I want to encourage you to be here. The team is working very hard uh, to make this a very special time for your kids. And so if you have not not registered your kids, please make sure you do that ages 3 through 11. If nothing else, you get a few hours of each night free. <laughs> so even if you're not interested in them learning about Jesus, you get to be free for a couple hours. So <laughs> you should be interested in them learning about Jesus. But I want to encourage you, sign up your kids. It's completely free to them ages 3 through 11, July 26 to the 29th. You signing them up will help them know how to prepare. Uh, and so you can show up and bring them if you haven't signed up. But this will really help them know how to prepare. Uh, and so I encourage you to do that. And then also our deeper youth are having a lot lock in on July 29th and 30th. That's going to be amazing as well. Um, they are also going to have a transformative time in the presence of God. They've been preparing uh, diligently for that, and uh, it's going to be really, really great. They're going to encounter God, have fun together, continue to build relationships with one another. And if you are a parent of a junior high or high school student, you get a whole night without them. They only have to come back home. Just give them the Gabriel and let them let them take care of it. And uh, but it's going to be a blessing. So uh, that's our student ministries. That's happening in the same week. So uh, let's make sure that we are signing up for those things. That is also free. Uh, and so make sure that your young people are a part of that. This coming Saturday is our Deeper Women's Gathering. Yes. There were hundreds and hundreds of women who were gathered together both here and online. I'm sure that this time is also going to be a powerful time together. So make sure you are here this coming Saturday in person and online. This time there will be a continental breakfast for you ladies. And so uh, come at 930, fellowship with one another, uh, eat a little bit of food and let's encounter the presence of God together. Rita Springer will be back with us this coming Saturday as well, so it's going to be awesome. We're looking forward to that. And then finally, uh, our, our um, men's breakfast is also happening uh, in person and online as well. That is next Wednesday. Uh, so brothers, make sure you are here for that. That's happening in person and online. But if you are in this area, I encourage you to come in person, not just online. 
fellowship is good. Fellowship is good, especially between brothers, for everybody, but I just want to encourage people to come. That's at 6 a.m., and so make sure 6.30 that there's a difference. <laughs> at that time, there's a difference. So 6.30 is the time uh, for that, but it's always an amazing time, so I want to encourage you to do that. Um, this is not a part of the announcements. This is something I just want to shout out right before uh, we enter into our time of the word. Um, Yesterday, uh, our wonderful uh, volunteers here um, with the food pantry had an opportunity to serve a number of families. And so this week, uh, I believe the number is 126 families received food uh, this week from our food pantry. And uh, we're so excited. I know they had some pictures. I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't a part of it, but um, cars coming uh, all day long, people being prayed for, people receiving food. So thank you, Deeper, for your generosity. It really is making a difference. Yes. And if you are a person who wants to serve in that way, I don't know who you see or all that kind of stuff, but uh, um, they do that on every third Saturday, and of course they do that every Thursday as well, but every third Saturday is open to the whole city, and so people come, and, and so we were able to feed 126 families, and so we're really, really grateful. I want to say to all the volunteers who come out and work so hard for the food pantry, thank you, thank you, thank you for your, for your love, your hard work. It is making a difference in the lives of people. So can we say thanks to the Lord for that wonderful group of people? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You about to send me somewhere, child. <laughs> I was trying to keep it together. He's like, hallelujah. I'm like, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. One generation shall praise his works to another. <laughs> hallelujah. All right, let me be good. Let me be good. Let me be good. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> I'm this close. Hallelujah. 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 About three or four years ago, there was a song that was sweeping parts of the body of Christ. Everybody was singing it every week, and then because we sang it so much, we stopped singing it all together. And I'm a whole step higher than the actual song it's written in, but um, if I threw us back for a minute, it goes, my hallelujah belongs to you. Say, my hallelujah belongs to you. I'm trying to let y'all get it out. I'm trying to let y'all get it out. Come on, say. Say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. You're going to learn, Corey. You're going to learn. You deserve it. Say, you you deserve it. Say you deserve it. Say you deserve. Come on, say, say my hallelujah. Say. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Say my hallelujah. Just when you thought it was safe to go to the back. My hallelujah. Whoa.
Give it to you. 
This is your ability to welcome them from North Carolina. And the firecracker that you just heard. This is Corey's wife, also one of the newer worship leaders at Deeper Fellowship, Tamala Harrison. Deeper family in this room and around the world, would you welcome the Harrison family? They have three wonderful girls who are over in children's ministry now. Their family is a blessing. Their church released them with much love and honor to move from North Carolina to Orlando to help. So they're not, they're not coming as refugees, they're coming blessed. That's important, y'all. That's very important. Their church blessed them and sent them and now our church receives them. So I'm 
supposed to preach still. But because you love Jesus, can you give him one more praise in this room? We're talking about giving Jesus all. like you don't want to be seated because your soul cries out all right y'all sit down y'all sit down y'all yeah. You wonder why these people sing like they do. You wonder why we make noise like we do. It's because our soul cries out. When we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, our soul, our belly, we're just giving a voice to our
have a challenge in a church. We put handcuffs on the musician's creativity, which shows that we haven't read Revelation. Because we're really going to struggle with all the colors, all the sounds, all the things that we see and hear. And so some of us, we look at moments like this and we say, oh, they're just in the flesh. No, no, no. What has happened is we have chained musicians too long. And so the full expression of creativity that allows people to honor God in their gift, we basically say, as long as we can sing, you just back it up. But no, they are creating and releasing a sound. And you will discover when you get to heaven, it sounds a lot like this. It's really loud. It's surrounding you. It's full of color. It's voices. It's instruments. It's angels. It's creation. It's water. It's trumpets. It's string instruments. It's drum. To do it as loud as you can. Come on, say. We give you. Because I know you, I know you have greater. Because I know you, I know you have greater. DTF, you join in too. We give you all say. that you had one more if I told you that you had just one more how would you sing it if you had this last time we give you say me Okay, I'm gonna give 
give you one more. I'm going to give you one more. Let's take it to church here. We give you all set.
Father, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your presence online. We thank you for all that you are doing in our hearts as we are in your presence. We've chosen the better thing. Just to sit at your feet. To be in your presence, we've chosen the better thing. It's worth it. We have children and a time that we normally target, so I'm going to hit that target regardless because he's worth it. If you could quickly give your attention, I was in between seeking God at this moment. What do we do? You can stay for a second. see if I was home in my house right now I wouldn't be trying to say anything cause when the glory comes there are no words to say
Would you lift up your hands here? Let's just acknowledge that he's here. Say, when the glory comes, there are no words to say. else left to do just lift your hands and say say when the glory Sure, 
praise and your affection upon him. Say Voices that you let's say it again. This is a holy moment. Say, This is a holy moment. This is what's happened. In every gaze, every view, every eye. your neighbor next to you doesn't know what happened you can proclaim this is a holy moment say this is a we don't just breeze past this when God walks in on us God walks in on and every gaze of this people and we're going to come to Jesus in a moment but it goes like this
would you sing it with me? Say, say, oh, I want Jesus. Oh, I want Him. Yeah. Oh, only Jesus. Take this world. Thank you. 
Jesus. Give me 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 Jesus. I'll take the king. I'll take the king. How many of you are ready for him to test that? I pray that you still have the shout on Tuesday when he tests that. You know, as we were spending so much time in the presence of the Lord today, I continued thinking I was gonna read it, but I don't think I will. You can go read it for yourself. But I continue thinking about one of my pa favorite passages of scripture in Isaiah chapter six. And I love this community, I love this church. And, and I joke with the fellow pastors and elders about this all the time. But I don't think a lot of times we know what we sign up for when we ask God to reveal himself. We love when he comes into the room, but then we don't understand every room he comes into changes. It changes. That's why when he comes into you, you change. We've been talking about that, right? 
And there's this reality that the prophet Isaiah, who had already prophesied for five chapters, all of a sudden sees him as he is. Do you remember what his first reaction was? Woe is me. Listen, I am a man of unclean lips. What had he done for five chapters? Prophesy. Your gift means nothing in the face of holiness. Your previous works mean nothing in the face of holiness. Everything in you that doesn't look like Him creates turmoil in the face of holiness. Now listen, He didn't stop there. Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. And the angel brought a coal touched it to his lips and said, your guilt has been removed. The presence of the Lord both reveals in you what is not like him and fixes in you what is not like him. Some of you are there right now. Some of you have loved this moment, this precious moment in the presence of a holy God, but some of you, you can feel there's some woe on the inside. There's some reality. There's things in me that are not like him. I love this. I'm drawn to this. But there's something. And Jesus is like, I've lifted the weight. I've paid the price. Now it's time to be made guilt-free. Because there is something else. After the guilt was removed, God asked a question. Who will I send? Some of you are there. Some of you are at the place you're ready. You need the coal to remove the guilt. Some of you, you've already dealt with the Lord. You, over the past few weeks, you've repented. You might even repented this morning for things. And you came in and you... But now the Lord is posing a question. Because in the presence of the Lord, He just doesn't come in to make you feel good. He, he brings you into His presence to reveal His priorities so He can ask you, will they become your priorities? Will you go? Can I send you to reveal me outside of this building? Some of you are receiving a question this morning. And there's another piece. Isaiah answered, I will go and some of you are there some of you the question has been posed for a while and you've been resisting but now in the presence of holy god you're ready to answer you're ready to submit regardless of where you find yourself the answer is in his presence the answer is here right now in this moment so i want to do something we're going to do it a little bit out of order, but I feel like it's what we need to do in light of the verse we're talking about, this moment being in the presence of a holy God. I want you, if you're standing, if you're kneeling, if you're sitting, wherever, just stay where you are. Just close your eyes. Do not move unless you're part of the prayer team. Do not move. The Lord is working. We're going to do something a little different. We do something a little different. I'm just going to ask whether, if you're online, I'm going to give you instructions in just a moment. But I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to build up. I'm not going to do anything. If you know right now, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need to be saved today. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand up right now. Don't wait. Raise the hand up. Raise it up high. Raise it up high. Raise it up high. Prayer team members, you see those hands, please go to them now. Don't wait, go to them now. A prayer team member is gonna come to you. I'm gonna ask those of you, I see you with your hands raised, don't even wait. You don't have to wait another moment. The prayer team member wants to work with you. I want you to go ahead and go with the prayer team member. Please, right now, just go ahead and go with the prayer team member if you've raised your hand. If you're online, I am gonna give you instructions in just a moment, because I believe there's those online. They're gonna to need to respond to this. I felt like that was very urgent for this room right now. 
I feel like there are people in this room, you know the Lord, but in the presence of the Lord, you realize there's things you need to deal with. You need to deal with. You need to deal with. You need to repent. You say, woe is me. I thought my works were enough. Woe is me, I thought my gift was enough. Both in this room and online, just take a moment, eyes closed. If you're online, just take a moment there. Just have a private moment with the Lord. And just hear the Lord say, I have the answer. I can wash you clean. I can set you free right now. I can set you free right now. Just give it to me. Repent and turn. In my presence, there is liberty. There is liberty for you. There is freedom for you from this thing. Turn now. Turn now. Turn now. I'm leading you away from that thing. I'm healing you of that thing. I'm cleansing you of that thing. The coal is being placed to your lips now. And that thing that held you back before will hold you back no longer. Greater relationship. Freer relationship now your relationship now while those in the room and online are rep repenting if you're if you're online right now and you feel like okay i need to give my life to the lord i need to give my life to the lord do it now don't wait just tell the lord right now lord i'm coming to you forgive me of my sins forgive me of my sins be my lord and savior i'm coming to you i know this is a little different than how we usually do it but i feel this needs to be a spontaneous moment this doesn't need to be something that i just rehearse you through this needs to be a moment where you respond to what he's doing right now just out of your own heart in your own words in your own circumstance right now respond to the lord he is here he is there with you wherever you are right now he is there respond to him respond to him and some of you in this room right now he's asking you a question I feel this so strongly because every time the Holy Spirit brings us into moments of presence like this he is going to call you into something whether that be a new level with him maybe that be a new direction for your life maybe that be giving up something that you thought you've been holding tight to for so long maybe it's laying hold again of something you've given up long ago whatever it is the Holy Spirit is asking some of us a question this morning I don't know what that question is for you he's calling you into something his presence always brings with it change newness forward movement it brings with it an increase of life a planting of seed a renewal of dreams a renewal of callings a remembrance of priorities this is what comes with the presence of the Lord it's not just a good feeling it's a forward momentum it is a catalyst into the next that's what's happening right now that's what's happening right now will you respond this is our time of response. That's what's happening right now. Will you respond? I can't respond for you. Will you say yes to the question of the Lord? Will you submit now to what the Lord is asking of you? Maybe it's something he's been asking for a while. Maybe it's something he's been asking for a while. And you're ready to say yes. Can we just pray this right now together? Whether you're submitting to the Lord as Lord and Savior for the first time or you're submitting to the Lord for something He's calling you into right now, this is a prayer of submission to the Holy God who is in this room. Can we pray it together? Say, Dear Jesus, I submit to you. I see you. I know you are here. I know you are working. I know you are moving my heart. And I say yes. I say yes. I will not just enjoy you. I will submit to you. I will not just experience you. I will follow you. I will give you my whole life. In Jesus name. Amen. Can we thank the Lord for what he's done and what he's doing? If you're online right now,
and you gave your life to the Lord for the first time today, we ask it on whatever platform you're on in the chat, you place hashtag I met Jesus. That's gonna give our moderators the opportunity to interact with you and post a link there for you to interact with so that we can get some information from you. Now we're gonna turn you over um, to the moderators in the back.